Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and I'd like to thank Aquatica for sponsoring this episode. Um, Aquatica do a wide range of housing supports, accessories, um, arms, um, and you can check it all out at aquatica.ca um, and, and see what they do. I, I'm joined today by my friend and fellow photographer, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And I, I thought, well, obviously, we're, we're all... Um, diving in home waters at the moment, um, thanks to <laughs> our inability to travel. Um, um, one of the things, obviously, that particularly is relevant to our home waters is that we tend to be wearing dry suits. So so I thought I would ask Alex to chat about some of the issues that um, that relates to diving in dry suits. But before he does that, a, a friend of ours, Noah Tucker, um, who's a very accomplished underwater photographer, um, recently, well, she learned to dive in a dry suit with me, um, and she's posted this on Facebook. She says, now that I'm a UK diving in a dry suit, I can compare the two. And she says, wetsuit versus dry suit. She says, dry suit's really hard work and you carry a ton of weight with you. Tanks, weight belt, your dry suit, all the trims in your camera and housing. Without help getting into the dry suit, it's very challenging. And once you're in, you think you'll die of heat exhaustion. Then an hour in the water, you think you'll die of hypothermia. <laughs> <laughs> once you do a dry suit there's no option to go to the toilet so better don't drink then you get dehydrated i've been thinking how easy it will feel when i go back to wetsuit diving for non-divers it's photo and diving division of wetsuit so so um and and she concludes by saying that all of a sudden it doesn't look that lightweight to me now um i i think um she is of course entirely correct in that in that when we dress up in all this gear it does make us certainly clumsier and it's heavier so on and so forth and it does make us yearn a bit for those days in a in a, in a three mil wetsuit with no weight on um, um but it doesn't i don't think it always needs to be like that so i i thought i'd ask alex for some of his experiences about how he modifies his um diving and his photography to to cope with wearing a dry suit um well if, if i think back to my first dry suit dives I actually think the big thing to get used to is that rigmarole, is yeah. that if you're used to being able to get ready for diving in just a few minutes and it's it's a pleasurable, easy experience all the way through, switching over to dry suit diving where actually that whole procedure takes you a lot longer and involves a lot more fiddling, you really notice that when you start. When you dry suit dive a lot, which all my diving has been dry suit diving for for longer than I care to remember, sadly, at the moment, for obvious reasons. I now just don't notice it at all. Yeah. And it's not that I don't do anything differently or I'm any better at putting it on or off. It's just I've just completely adapted to that. And I think that's the, the would say is the big difference is you get used to what you're used to. Yeah. And if you're used to diving in a rash vest and shorts, then you know, putting a five mil suit on is a real pain in the in, you know. In, in the in the lower back as you squeeze into it <laughs> if you're used to diving in wet you know in, th in a single wetsuit and you go to wearing a dry suit with multiple undersuits you know just it's tiring putting all that stuff on the first that's times cool. you do it but yeah. when you get used to doing that that's just how you dive and so a lot of it comes with it with exposure to it exposure yeah. to your exposure suits makes a a big difference to to your adaption to it so all those things nurse says are true and we were diving together that day and it was an unusually hot day up in Scotland. Um, and we, I was actually, I was, I was complaining about how hot it was before I went in the water. Um, and I was, you know, standing in the shade on the boat and in the wind trying to cool myself down um, before I finished putting my suit on. Um, but I think once you're used to it, you get used to it. And I, I would say that for me, the transition of diving from a wetsuit to a dry suit actually it's the rigmarole pre-dive is perhaps more of an issue than in the water. And if you're an experienced diver, you will adapt to a good dry suit very quickly. If you have a bad dry suit that doesn't fit you well um, and leaks or is not very flexible, those things can, can be a real issue, real issue. So um, a few things I would say that I found very valuable as an underwater photographer in a dry suit. First of all is have a good dry suit that seals well, that's, easy to fit on and that fits you well if your dry suit has loads of spare space in it air is going to move around and it makes it harder to dive in if your dry suit fits you reasonably well and there's not air moving around from one end to the other tipping you about it's actually very easy to dive in and i know a lot of dry suit divers who find a dry suit is actually easier to have good trim and buoyancy in than a wetsuit because you yeah. have that buoyancy all along your body and for me, that, you know, is, is a really comfy and a really great way to dive. 
so one of the things that I do with the dry suit, and I, I mean I dive in the dry suit a lot, is is essentially the air inside the dry suit moves around as a bubble. Um, you know, it depends on what your body position is to where that bubble sits. And I actually use that to my advantage. You know, if I want to go feet up, I deliberately stick that bubble down in my feet. Um, you know, if I want to go head up, I can get I can get my get it up on my shoulders. So so in actual fact, the fact that I I actually find that I can achieve trim good in whatever trim position I want to be in much much easier in a dry suit than I can in a wet suit um and and I find get you know I'm 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 less maneuverable in a dry suit but actually I maintaining a body position is much much easier and um, it does take a little bit of experience to get used to the idea of deliberately moving the bubble around but actually moving that bubble is is a really effective way of of getting a good position so so you know certainly you know if I I've got a silty bottom and I'm trying to take pictures I can kick the air up into my feet it sits up on my feet I sit head down and I can get pictures without disturbing the mm. silt. Um, and conversely, I'm sorry to hear about right. your silty bottom, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hopefully, you know. the cream will work, and you'll get it. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, I'm taking the pills. Yeah. Uh, sorry <laughs> to yeah. be around right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where was I? Um, yeah. I also find I have to say and this is not relevant to any particular, but I find when I, because I dive in a dry suit a lot, I find that when I dive in a wet suit, I spend my life pressing my chest to try yeah, and I get air into it. it. That's that. not there. I think when I have to go up the stairs at home, I'm doing that. Going, this would be easier <laughs> with a bit more positive buoyancy. <laughs> um, but the yeah, the um, I think a couple of things I would say on dry suit choice is when I wanted to get my first dry suit, um, um, you know, um, a long time ago, I remember yeah. asking everyone I knew about dry suit brands and which they preferred and what type of suit, because dry suits come in, are made of several different types of material, some of which are very thin, some of which are very thick. And yeah. the, the wrist seals and things like that are also very variable. You can have ones made of different material. I'm not gonna go into all the details of them. And, you, yeah. and it, there seems to be a lot of choice and what I found was I found different photographers whose work I loved and who were very good divers would all be in love with different brands. Yeah. And what I would say is the best dry suit for you is also the one that you're most familiar with. Right. And what I've concluded is, you know, there's people say, oh, it's got to be this. It's got to be that brand. It's got to be this type of seal. It's got to be dry gloves. It's got to be wet gloves. It's the one that you're used to is the most important. And I think... And I yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Alex. And and and, and unfortunately, because they are expensive, I, I would really say that the only way you'll really get familiar with a suit is if you own your own. Um, you know, they're expensive. They are expensive thing to buy. Um, and and that's this is a drawback. But ultimately, you know, borrowing or hiring suits continuously means you never get in that position where you get used and comfortable with one particular suit. Um, and I think it really makes one of the big differences once people get their own suit, get used to it, get happy with it add the bits that they want onto mm. it um that's when when they really start and it, you know, i see it's quite regular you know, people who hire suits repeatedly each suit's different you know and and, and behaves differently and and, and it, becomes, it presents a big problem yeah so mm. so al although it is a, a significant investment you know if you plan to dive in, in environments where uh, plan to dive take photographs in environments where a, a dry suit's necessary it's worth buying your own I think it's an important. So one process. thing I would say though is I do like a suit with a front zip of some sort, mm. and that's mainly because uh, well two reasons. Firstly, I do dive quite a lot on my own, and I yeah. like to be able to get my dry suit on and off on my own without having to have someone there or a handy tree st tree which I can hook a back zip onto. But also, yeah, I definitely right. found with the back zip suit that I had, um, it it limited my maneuverability of my shoulders. And as an underwater photographer, the thing I move, the, want to move the most when I'm diving in a dry suit is that, to work those camera angles. And yeah. the front zip, I find, is much less encumbering for that. And yeah, I think yeah. that's an important thing when trying a dry suit is make sure you know what undersuits you're planning to wear with it, wear those yeah. undersuits, and then make sure the suit still gives you maneuverability. And I think yeah. one thing I struggle with with my suit is, you know, as soon as I dive slightly colder waters than normal, I had to wear more undersuit it really bulked the suit out. And as a result, I really struggle with that back zip just being like diving with a coat hanger down my neck, you know, yeah. in a jacket. And it was very hard photograph. As, as a normal diver, it wouldn't have affected me. But yeah. as someone wanting to use my hands for photography, it really did. So, so a couple of other things specifically for photographers as well. Um, there, there are, broadly speaking, again, what, not, without wanting to digress too much, but there are some types of, of vent that are on your wrist 
Um, and although they're very good way of venting a suit, they're really hard to use because you've got to stick them in the air in order to get the air out. Um, and generally, the so-called auto dump, the one that's on top of your shoulder, is far more effective because I can hold up to my camera and still vent air at the same time. Um, and I, I can do it without it. And I find that's a, that's a really important distinction. So, so the so-called auto dump, I, th I think that they tend to be a bit of a UK thing, so-called cuff dumps, but I think that's an important thing. Something else I really like, and I know you and I differ a little bit on this, Alex, I really like having pockets on my dry suit. I find, I find pockets on the outside of my legs, on the outside of my thighs, um, a really good place for storing gear. I can get into. I can never get into BCD pockets because they're all sort of tucked up into my armpit. And I find that pockets under my legs make life so much easier. So storing all those bits and pieces, and you know, and the size of the pockets I've got on mine, I can get sort of small tripod and and, and, a, and a remote strobe or anything like that in it. And I, I find that really really useful. I think that's a really really play, really really good place for storing extra gear. Of course, diopters, you know, all the other stuff that we we drag around with us. So it's, it's a it's a nice place to store it. So. Yeah, yeah the reason I don't go for that on my dry suit is is actually because I've used my dry suit both for photographing basking sharks and for photographing orcas, and I really don't want that drag on my legs when I'm yeah. free swimming with those those sorts of creatures, and that really yeah. is the only reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does add to the drag, which is which is mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of, of of kind of the other thing, obviously we mentioned obviously the buoyancy control is really important in a dry suit, and I think there's a, there's a bit of a common misconception about the amount of weight that's needed in dry suits. Um, in general, you know, you need to be careful about overweighting in dry suits because a lot of people will assume you know with a dry suit you automatically need to add lots of weight, and that's often not the case because dry suits themselves don't really float. And and give going back to you know we want to be as photographers we want to float effortlessly, we want to be able to get ourselves in in positions that, that allow us to avoid staring at the bottom so on and so forth. And adding extra weight makes all those things much, much harder. So so you know it's worth investing the time in making sure that you you do get yourself correctly weighted, that you you wear the right amount of weight. And it's not an automatic I mean I wear the same amount of weight in my dry suits I wear in a five mil. So you know it's not it's not a it's not it's no different um so so you know people often assume i've got a dry suit i need to add a load of extra weight because i'm going to be more buoyant and that's not necessarily the case it does yeah. depend what really also you're wearing as undersuits because you know as warming up now it's um early summer here in the uk when we're recording this and i've yeah. dropped a layer of my under of my suit and as a result i've dropped a couple of kilos from my weight belt you know yeah. and it's and i really like it when it gets to high summer and i'm diving really thin undersuits and yeah then i'm diving as little weight as with a with a with a wetsuit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yes absolutely it does it does vary on, on how much air you're trapping inside it that's the but i think i think that's something as well you know when people first start diving dry suits they tend to make the mistake of, of overweighting it it's not necessarily the case it's important to check to make sure you're correctly weighted um and um, last of all, and, and, and possibly, you know, that most people, the, the limiting factor on our time underwater is often how cold your hands get. Um, and, you know, wearing gloves, again, there, there are different ways of wearing gloves, but investing in good gloves, whatever system you choose to use is very important. But also to recognize that when you wear gloves, you're more clumsy. It's not, it's not rocket science. You know, if you wear gloves on land, you're more clumsy. It's no different. And what you really need to do is just, you know, get really used to using your camera controls with gloves. This is something you can do out of the water. Put the gloves on, fiddle with your camera controls. Um, make sure that you're comfortable with finding things like your BCD controls, for example your dry suit inflator when you can't feel as much because you've got gloves on these are all things that again you can practice in the dry you know you don't need to necessarily practice underwater but but they make a big difference when, when we do get in the water with them on so um, yeah yeah absolutely i mean i would say that photographically i think you know in those colder waters with less dexterity and that sort of thing the main change that you want to make is you want to set appropriate goals you know yeah. i know you and i we dive together in lembe you know, we'll often you know, we're busy running a workshop, don't really think about the photography to you in the water. Maybe you're going to carry a lot more accessories and then figure it out underwater. That yeah. rarely works well on a dry suit dive because of your lack of dexterity. You want to go down with more limited choice. Typically, I'll dive three or four, you know, close up diopters in my pocket in a cold water dive. I very rarely take more than two down on a, on a, on a cold water dive. Sorry, on a, you know, in the tropics, I'll use four in the cold water too, just that paring down of the trick of the kit. If it's a snoot dive, I'll very often go, right, this is a snoot dive. I'm just going to go single strobe and a snoot. And yeah. the whole dive is on that technique. And if I find something else, so be it. 
you know, I'll yeah. get more out of my dive by being properly focused and not having to deal with things. And actually, I lost my snoot dry suit diving recently because during my snoot dive, I spotted some subjects that I, you know, I, sp well, I spotted a pair of Tompot blennies fighting, thought that would be a great photo, took my snoot off, um, thought I'd clipped it on, missed the yeah. clip, um, and it floated away. Oh, easily done yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a yeah and that's Sim just Sim overloading but yeah Sim simple's good yeah, yeah excellent um not directly read to simple but um i gather fedex has just paid you a visit oh yeah 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 it's a good good place to to to, to, to wrap up it's, it's it's always interesting to see um many of you probably know um these aren't going to green screen very well, actually. Maybe I should turn my green screen off or keep them on an angle. Um, right, ma actually, many yeah. people watching this will be well aware of my book, um, yep. Underwood Photography Masterclass. And a, a new language edition arrived today, um, which is this one, Fantastic. which is the, the that's the, this one here is the Korean edition. That's the uh, Chinese language edition one. But the Korean very one cool. arrived today. And um, I was just, just saying to Adam, because it arrived just as we were about to record this. Um, the difference between them is the way they print books. It's just the black color. Books are printed in CMYK, in, in um, C is cyan, M is magenta, Y is yellow, and K stands for black. And the printer prints those those four colors, for want of a better word, and uh, using color plates. And so the easy way to change a language is not to relay out the whole book, but just to change the, the black color plate, the plate that's doing the, the words. And so if you actually look at these books, all the, um, so that's the English version, I won't find the same page easily. But in, in, in the, um, maybe I can try and find the next page, what page is it? 46. Um, what you'll see is when it changes language. Um, so that's, that's in. Hold it in, a bit more centrally, Alex. Yeah, that's in English. There we go. And then yeah. in, in, in yeah. the page layout is exactly the same. It's just yeah. the, the black plate has changed and therefore the, the color. Um, and so that makes it relatively easy for them to produce a, um, multiple language editions. It has been a frustration of mine that, the language editions have been so slow on this. And I know that individual photographers have, have translated the whole book into Spanish, have hand translated the whole book into French wow. individually. And we've struggled to get deals to make those those foreign language editions happen. Um, but hopefully more will be on the way um, and people can enjoy it in their own language. Because I did put a lot of effort into the writing of the book, um, yeah. both in, in the phrasing and the, the, the personality that comes through in the book. And... Yeah. I think if you get to read it in your own language, I think you get more of that enjoyment out of the book. Um, you really hear the voice of the book and the way things are explained. So, yeah, yeah. hopefully more to come. But, yeah, nice to see Excellent. another one come through. And, and presumably those would be available via Amazon or, you know, wherever local booksellers, in, in wherever you are. I mean, obviously yeah. China and Korea. Yeah, yeah the I Korean one. I've, I said to them I'd, I'd help them with, um, with, um, with the promotion, but they seem to be quite content that they know their own market and they know how to deal with things. So I think within the Korean underwater photography community, it's being widely, widely promoted. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's excellent news. Thank you, Alex. Um, and thank you for your, all your input about dry suit diving, somewhat, somewhat different. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for watching very much. Um, and obviously to thank Aquatica again for sponsoring this episode. Um, we really appreciate our sponsor support. Um, Please feel free to add any comments about your experience of diving in a dry suit or, or anything else in the comment section and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you soon.